So Apple just wrapped up WWDC for 2022, and it looks like they finally gave us the one feature that all iPadOS and iPad Pro users have been wanting, I think since like iPadOS 12 or iPadOS 13. But without further ado, let's see exactly what they gave us because there's an abundance of new features, and that last one is just amazing. Let's talk about it. Before we get started, if you guys did watch the Apple keynote, leave some comments down below if you guys were a little bit scared because they saved that last feature to the very end because whew, it was a rocky road during that presentation to see if we did get that final secondary monitor support. But to start off, Apple started off talking about their new collaboration feature. It's basically a way to collaborate in real time using Apple's native ecosystem. And that's one thing that stood out through the entire presentation was just how unified and how they promoted continuity so keenly with their ecosystem. And Apple is one of the few companies in that position where they're late, they have all their devices from their phone to their iPad to their computers and everything else in between that just talks to each other so perfectly, which allows all these continuity features to be very, very well built and very well thought out. So now being able to just start a collaboration based on an iMessage is an amazing thing to see. So we got collaboration features in the iWork suite like Keynote and Pages. We have collaboration features inside of Safari. So we were able to share group tabs. So let's say you're working on a presentation together or a project with a group of people and you guys are all looking at the same tabs. Those tabs will be grouped together and you'll get a little icon in the Safari tabs saying like, hey, you and these other people are working on the same thing and viewing these same websites. So again, that's a great feature to have. And obviously this collaboration feature also came into the notes application. And then one thing that I do want to know about notes, which is a great segue into the new feature called Freeform, is if notes is going to adopt some of the features from Freeform. One of the biggest knocks that I have with the notes application is the inability to have an infinite canvas inside of the notes application. Basically what that means is if you start drawing, you can actually zoom out and then continue to draw outside of that and you're not stuck to one rigid page that just goes up and down, you should be able to go on an X axis. So be able to move it horizontally and not just vertically, but also zoom out. So you should have as many avenues to work with on the Apple Notes app. So again, that's a perfect segue into Freeform. Freeform is this new white canvas look and collaboration feature, which has been around with other applications. I know that Zoom uses it. I know that the Google Suite uses it. It's a way to get onto a video chat and work in real time with other people to just share ideas, take notes down, you know, have kind of a web effect of things when you're working on a certain project. So Apple is bringing this built in natively to the Apple ecosystem. It's called Freeform. It's not supposed to be out for a little while, so it might be a feature that comes with a 16.1 or newer update. I don't think it'll be out with 16.0. So it should be a very welcome feature because this is great for larger teams working on a single task and a single project. Instead of having a bunch of files that people are working on on their own or you know copies of the same file with different iterations, now you just go onto the whiteboard, plan everything out, and you have all the tools that you would have with the Notes application. So again, I'm hoping that the Notes application, even without this collaboration and this freeform feature, does adopt that infinite canvas because that's one of the reasons why I sometimes just go to OneNote because OneNote does give you the infinite canvas on the iPad. So I'm hoping that Apple Notes gives us the same thing. Another new update was to Game Center. Now Game Center, I think came out with iOS 6 or 7 way back in the day. And I actually remember using it a decent amount, but through the years, it hasn't really gotten too many updates. And it looks like Apple is now doubling down on the gaming situation on the iPad because they figured it's a very powerful tool. The M1 processor can run any game from the App Store. Apple Arcade seems to be getting some traction. So revamping Game Center was the next best thing. So now you have leaderboards, you have milestones, you have the ability to collaborate with other people or play with other people, and you have like your friends list. So it's gonna be another version of like the PlayStation Network or the Xbox Live, but now with Game Center, Apple focused. And again, not that I play too many games on the actual iPad, but if I do play games, it's gonna be on the iPad. I'm a big 2K guy. So this is just another welcome addition to be able to compare things and get on leaderboards and say that you're better than your friends at certain games. So it's always a welcome addition, especially because Game Center hasn't been updated in a very, very long time. So then after that, Craig jumped on stage and started talking about desktop class applications. But again, it wasn't really as if we were gonna get a ported over version of Final Cut Pro or Photoshop. There wasn't like a one-to-one. -one. It was more so the ideas of desktop class applications started to make its way into iPadOS and into iOS. So the ability to customize your toolbars is something new that has never been done before. So it's, again, it's these little features and these UI changes that's been taken from the desktop class browsers or the desktop class applications and then moved into the iPad to make it more desktop class like. It's not going to be a complete port over of a desktop class application moved over to the iPad. It's going to be kind of a desktop class application formed into the iPad UI, but with those same features. 
So with that, we will be getting a brand new file system, supposedly, or at least a better way to navigate that file system. So things like being able to see file size, being able to see folder size, getting a real kind of status bar when transferring files and not just getting that little click wheel that you have to click on when transferring files. So those are all welcome additions, which I'm very happy for because the files app is one of those apps that's been a big detriment and it's never been something where you can pinpoint to say like, hey, I really don't like it because of this. It's just not as easy to navigate as things like Finder on macOS or even, you know, the Windows File Explorer is even much better. So any welcome addition or updates to the Files app is always good to have. Another new addition with especially the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. So I've always told people that even though the M1 iPad Pro is very expensive, the display by itself is like enough of a reason to get that thing. It is the cheapest price point into that XDR class kind of screen and display because it comes in at $1,100. The next best thing is a 5,000 XDR display for a desktop computer. So now being able to use that and parlaying that into now color grading is something that Apple's gonna start taking advantage of. Now me personally, I probably won't be taking too much advantage of that. I kind of just, you know, I work from the iPad anyway, so whatever colors look good to me on the iPad is what I'm gonna ride with. So I'm not really comparing it to what it looks like on other monitors, but it's great to have if you are creative, if you are professional, it's gonna be a great tool to have for color grading, color correction, and making sure that things are looking how you want it to look when your final project is done and exported. And now let's talk about the final thing that Apple mentioned. Now, the one thing that I will talk about first is that this is the first time where Apple is segregating features on the iPads. Since 2010, the iPad feature set has been the same across the board, whether you buy the cheapest iPad right now at $300 or 329, or if you buy a fully loaded M1 iPad Pro with iPad OS 15, the experience is going to be the exact same. The only thing that's gonna be different is just how fast things get done, pretty much. Like how fast things render, how fast things export, etc. So now for the first time ever, the M1 versions of iPads, so now we have the M1 Air, and then the 11 inch and 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pros, they will be getting this new feature called Stage Manager. Now, at first I was a little bit confused what Stage Manager was really gonna be, but it looks to be exactly what we wanted. But again, Apple was able to do this in a way where it was still unique to the iPad. Just like they did with 13.4 cursor support, they brought a feature that was familiar for years, right? A point and click solution, just like a mouse that's been around since the 70s. And they were still able to make it unique to the iPad, but familiar enough for anybody to be able to pick up and use it, right? So that is exactly what they're doing with the Stage Manager. So now Stage Manager allows you to have floating windows on your iPad. So it basically puts you into this mode where you have your dock persisted on the screen at all times. I do wish they actually made the dock a little bit smaller and not kept it the same size, just to be able to take advantage of as much screen as possible. But I don't wanna complain too much when they give us one of the best features that we've ever seen on an iPad. But again, it's gonna allow you to have floating windows. It's gonna allow you to have kind of different versions of a screen. So you can cluster up to four different windows together and have different bookmarks for windows and things like that. You can overlay windows. Again, it's gonna be a very familiar experience, but it's gonna be very iPad-esque for lack of a better term. And Apple has been great at doing that, giving iPad pro level features, but keeping it unique to the iPad because Apple's not gonna wanna just port Mac OS to the iPad because then people were gonna have to make a decision. Do I get an iPad or do I get a Mac? Apple's always gonna sell you those two devices as supplementary devices where together it becomes a much better experience versus if you get one or the other. And then the final cherry on top was actual external monitor support. So with the iPad, you can finally plug in an external monitor to your iPad Pro or your M1 iPad Air, because again, these are M1 features. So you're able to just plug them in and it's gonna start working like a real secondary monitor. It's taking the design language of the stage manager. So it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one comparison to Mac OS. It's gonna be an extension of that stage manager just on a secondary monitor. We no longer have just a mirror display and now we can actually use that and have as many windows as we want open and be able to work efficiently with real multitasking. Again, it's funny how we sit here, we talk about floating windows as if it's something brand new, but again, Apple's gonna Apple, but finally I'm very happy that they did give us something, but now I'm just curious to see when we're gonna be able to actually play with it. So long story short, we had a great update to iPadOS 16 and the M1 lineup of applications or the M1 lineup of iPads. And honestly, the entry point from a price standpoint isn't that bad. At $600, you can get yourself an M1 iPad Air. Yeah, it's only 64 gigs, but that gives you the power to get you know, everything that the iPad Pro can do, which is nice to have. So you don't have to get that $1,100 iPad in order to get these features, which I love to see. So overall, I'm very, very happy with what Apple's doing, especially on the floating Windows side. I'm just excited to actually get it. I think Apple's actually holding off iPadOS 16 until July. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, but that's gonna do it for this video. Just wanted to give you guys an update on iPadOS specifically. iPad is obviously going to inherit all the different things from iOS 16, like the passkey. You know, we do have a new weather application finally. Of course, Apple didn't give us the uh, calculator that we've always wanted, but we do have a weather app, which is beautiful. We're gonna be able to customize our home screens, customize our lock screens, 
So we'll have a full video encompassing all of the iOS 16 stuff on iPad. I just wanted to get a video out of all the new iPad specific features, which I'm very excited for for iPad OS 16. So if you guys made it to the very end of this video, leave a little dolphin, we're still rocking the dolphin right here, just so I know you made it to the end of the video, and leave some comments down below. Are you guys excited for this release? Is it everything that we wanted? Are you guys excited about this new stage manager feature? Or is it something that maybe is still lacking a little bit? But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys wanna watch some more iPadOS 15 or iPadOS 16 content, click on one of these right here. But until next time, everybody, I'm excited. I'm out of here.